Take your Bible, if you would, please. Um, you know, I'm going to start here. I know I did this a couple Sunday nights ago. I'm preaching on power. Turn to, turn to the book of... Um, Turn the book of Job, we'll start there and we'll go through these scriptures. And, um, but let me go back to this. This issue of power and control. I think, I think part of what I'm going through today is an inward struggle for control. What's gonna, what is going to rule over me? Who's going to rule over me? What's going to win out? And I just wanted to go through this list again of power and control, rule and authority. Again, it's, it's something I, I, I don't think this way. I don't look at y'all as a group to control. Um, Chris, you may have seen me yesterday... And all of that fiasco trying to get that safe out, at some point I, I just backed off and just kind of backed away into the basement. And I thought, man, there's a lot of chiefs here and very little Indians. And uh, so that, that's my nature. If, if I see somebody wanting to just rule the roost, my nature is to just back away from them. I'll let you have it. And... Um, so I, I, I just don't understand that kind of thinking. I don't, I don't try to exert uh, macho influence over my wife. I don't threaten her. I've never hit her. I, I just, I'm not that way. I, I, you know, I had to raise my children. Of course, I had to whip them. They all know that I've whipped them multiple times. But that wasn't some power and control game. It was something that they needed done to them. To show them that things that are wrong is going to hurt you. And so when it comes to these things, I just don't understand them. But there are spirits that are like this. And they then work through people who are like this. They are power hungry people. And I mentioned political power and control. And this is, this is always going on in every realm of government anywhere in the world. You name it. If there's, if there's politics, there's a fight for power and control. And if you think the Republicans are always the good guys, you're wrong. Because they, they can do... Richard Nixon did just as many dirty tricks in the White House and got caught doing it as practically anybody else ever did, and he was a Republican. But you have political power and political control. That also works inside churches. When I was in Oklahoma for three years, I was going to Bible college out there. I was, I was always at the state meetings that they had for all the Free Will Baptist churches in Oklahoma. And there's quite a few out there. And there are a lot of them fairly good sized churches. And there's a lot of money out there. And what I saw in their uh, state meetings, their state business meetings, was a lot of Power games, control games. Who's going to control the money? Who's going to control the direction of the domination? Who's going to get voted in to be the leader, the executive, uh, the executive powers of the denomination or whatever? I saw a lot of that stuff and I didn't like it. Uh, I've seen power games played here back when, when Melissa and I were young, back around 1979. There was a, a, a power games that led up to a church split. And I, I just didn't like that. I wanted no part of it whatsoever. And, and any time as pastor, I saw that rise up in the church. I just, I just put it away right then and there. I'm not going to do that. Financial power and control. People who are in control of money. People who want to control your money. I do not believe this nonsense that they're telling you that they're running out of quarters and half dollars and nickels and dollar bills and five. I don't believe that stuff. This is about power over your money. And as long as you have cash, you have the power over it. As long as it's electronic, you don't. It's that simple. 
mind control. And that is, and there are mind control things that are being played out in real life. The news that you listen to, the things that you read on the internet, those are mind control things. Not, not like in some cloak and dagger movie where they hypnotize somebody and they talk them into killing the president. Not anything like that. But being able to change the way people think. And if you go back, some of you who are older than me can remember a time when there would have never been anybody who ever admitted being gay or a homosexual back in 1950. 1960 would have never happened. But now we're making our children in our school, they're making our boys wear dresses. That's, that's mind control. Teaching children that guns are evil. When in fact, most, most of you guys grew up as a boy with a gun in your house that you had access to and you didn't kill nobody. Physical, physiological control, control over your body. These, these idiots, these women out there saying the government has no right to tell me what I can do with my own body. Then they shouldn't be able to tell me I should get a vaccine. But see, they're, they're hypocritical on that. Subtle or subliminal control, behind the scenes influence, information control and power, ecclesiastical power. Let me tell you, you as a Christian, is there anybody on this earth that stands between you and God? No, not even me. You have just as much right to pray to God by yourself. You have just as much right to read the Bible and learn something from God by yourself as I do. You don't have to get it from me if you don't want to. But most churches now, and, and it's, a, it's a very subtle game, people are learning to yield over their rights to their pastor. They will say, well, he's a learn, he's doctor, so he's got a PhD in theology. And I guess, you know, there's things that I don't understand about the Bible, so I imagine he already knows them. So I'll just listen to him. That guy's gonna use that against you. And you're gonna be held accountable for that, by the way. You're gonna stand before God and give an account of who you listen to and why you listen to him. And that kind of stuff I just I just don't bite. I just don't I don't like it. Now, we had a good time with that Esther story, amen? I'm not so sure I'm going to have a good time today, but I, I did this, I, I checked, because we didn't have service last Sunday night, but the Sunday night before that, I went over some of this. But I think I need this today, and I'm going to try to move through some of this very quickly, because I know what's in my notes after this, and I know I need it. The power of our enemies. Let's, let's stop and have a word of prayer first. Father, I need your help today. You know more about me than even I know. So, Father, would you help me today? And Lord, if it was up to me, I would have just sat down today. But these people have come. They're asking for bread. And I am out of bread. So, Lord, would you rise, would you give us bread today? In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. We know the story of Job, Job 1.12, The Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. The devil, don't misunderstand this, the devil has power over you when God allows him to have power over you and don't ever think that God won't let him do it. Job, the Bible described, was a righteous man and perfect in all his ways. He was not some wicked, 
half-hearted churchgoer that only went to church every now and then, read his Bible every now and then. He wasn't like that. Job was a righteous man. But God was going to reveal his power in his way in Job's life. And God let Satan have a certain amount of control over Job. First, it was over his property. And he lost everything except his wife. Then, it was over his own body. And had not God put a stop to what Satan was doing in Job's life, Satan would have killed him. We know that Satan has the power of death. The devil will come after you with everything God allows him to come after you with. It may be that he, God's going to teach you a lesson. It may be that God, you, you've had this coming. It may be that you've just gotten so cold on God that God's going to turn the devil loose on you for a while to remind you why you got saved to begin with. And I think every now and then some of us need to be reminded why we left that world and escaped it to come to this one, every now and then we need to be reminded of what we left. Psalm 37, 35, I've seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Who knows what kudzu is? What is that, George? If you drive out to the Appalachian Mountains, if you get out in East Tennessee and Western North Carolina, the forests are covered with an invasive vine. It actually came from Japan, didn't it? It's a Japanese vine, kudzu. I think that's what it is. I don't know how it got over here, but once it got over here, and it'll take over and kill an entire forest. And I, I have cousins that live out in North Carolina, and we were out there one time, and I asked him, I said, he, he said, we could see the kudzu growing over his driveway. I said, how often do you have to cut that? He said, about every two or three days, just to keep it out of his driveway. Every two or three days, it would just take over. That's how fast, listen, that's how fast wickedness will take over in a family, a church, a nation, it's how fast it'll, it's how, that's how powerful it is. I've seen the wicked in great power. And right now, the wicked are in great power. They're not going to roll over and just let the Supreme Court undo Roe versus Wade. I guarantee you they've got something planned to make sure the babies stay murdered. Micah 2.1, woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in their power, it's in the power of their hand. John chapter 19, verse 10, then saith Pilate unto him, speakest thou not unto me, knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and I have power to release thee. Old Pilate just boasting and bragging about how much power he had. Jesus reminded him, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. So one thing I know about today with me, is that I know that the devil's aggravating me. I know he's getting at me. And the other thing I know about it, is God is letting him do it. For whatever reason, God's letting him do it. There's something that God's going to help me with. Something that God is going to humble me with. And trust me, the things that I believe that are that God is going to use our church and its ministries for in the future have the potential to be huge. I've seen too many preachers in my life 
that when they get a name known out there, when they get a big, like they get a big church, then, Brother George, they get a, a head the size of the church. Then they think that they're God. And I begged God a long time ago, God, don't ever, don't ever let that happen to me. I know my wife wouldn't put up with it. That's control mechanism number one is sweetie pie. But I, I just, I don't want it. They gave me a, this that you see here, if you remember, they gave that to me when we dug a well out in Samburu. And I really didn't understand what I was doing out there until the governor told me, all of this is for you. Do you know that? And I went, what? Yeah, you're the one that dug the well. All of this... All of these singers, all these people, they're, they're not singing to me. They're not singing to, to, they're singing to you. They're thanking you. And I just, I was very uncomfortable with that. I was gracious to accept it. But I, that's just not me. Ephesians 2, 2, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's all the people that you know that are lost. They're not saved. The devil will use them against you in your life. Do not be surprised at how your own family, your own friends, your own husband, your own wife, your children, your mom and dad, your grandchildren, do not be surprised at how they'll turn against you. Luke 4, the devil said unto him, This is when Jesus was being tempted. All this power will I give thee and the glory of them. For it is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. He had the power. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, talking of the Antichrist. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Revelation 13, 2, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seed and great authority. And I want you to look at verse uh, 4. They worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. They worship the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Now, there's something else in here. Why don't you look at... In fact, open your Bible to Revelation 13. I want you to underline, underline this in your Bible. In Revelation 13, 5, There was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. But now look in verse 7. And underline this in your Bible. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. When I read that, I've, I've been looking at that for years and never really thinking about it. But it says, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to win the war. Now, you can say, well... That's, you know, that's going to happen in the end times. That's going to happen during the tribulation. And I believe we'll be gone by then. The Bible says the spirit of Antichrist is already here. Am I right on that? Have you not felt the spirit of Antichrist overcome you? I have. I have. In verse 12, he exercised the, the, the second beast, the false prophet, exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And that, that false prophet causes people to worship idols. Well, the New Testament version of idolatry is covetousness. I mean, I'm looking at you people. I can say, I can, I can say, well, they're, they're, they're not a bunch of, uh, they're not a bunch of drunkards. They're not out drinking and partying every Friday night. Thank God. They're not murderers. Thank God. Um, and, and all, and all that stuff. But I guarantee you, 
You got a covetous nature just like I do. I want this. I want that. I got to have this. I got to have that. Never satisfied. Then never satisfied with what you've got. I, I have a relative. Uh, well, she's now gone on. She's passed on now. So I guess I can say it, it was an aunt of mine. As I was growing up, she was always having her husband, my uncle, build her a new house. And she would no more get in that house. And then she would say, well, I want another one. And he'd go build her another one. And I remember we'd go to Arkansas to visit. And I never knew. They said, we're going to go out and see Uncle this and Aunt that. And I'm going, okay, where do they live now? And it was always someplace different. Never happy with what she had. Always wanted something else. Always wanted something else. That's the same kind of idolatry as these people over here at Sacred Heart Catholic Church bound in front of that statue over there. Revelation 13, 14. Let me move past this. Ephesians 6. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and what? Powers. We're wrestling against powers. Things that have power over us. Things that have power over our physical body. Lust. Lust of our flesh. Things that have power over our minds, whether it's, like I said, whether it's covetousness. Covetousness always starts with the eyes and the mind. Or power over, let's say, power over our emotions. Whether it's, whether you like to just get joyed up, either with drugs or something else or alcohol or whatever it is. Or uh, you're constantly depressed, constantly oppressed. We saw that word this morning in the Sunday school lesson about being pressed, being pressed against. The devil's always pushing us into depression, anxiety, jealousy. I'm not, I'm not saying that men don't ever get jealous, but I will say that primarily women usually deal with a lot of jealousy issues. And I'm not looking at anybody. I'm looking up at the ceiling. I'm looking over here. Am I right? I mean, I saw that kind of stuff in high school. Girls get together. Ooh, what, how, what, what is she doing with him? You know, stuff like that. These are things, these are things that have power against us. Now, this is what I wanted to preach this morning, so let me run through this. For those who are powerless, and that is me this morning. I have no power this morning to preach. I was going to try to sing. I was picking out a song to sing. I, I, I just don't have it in me today. Second Chronicles 14, 11, Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee, and in, thy name, and in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God. Let no man prevail against thee. Asa was right. God is able. God can use. Yeah, can God use 50 million people? Yeah. 
Wouldn't it be nice if we could get a million people to pray for something? We share prayer requests on Facebook and we get, you know, 15, 16, 20, 100 people praying about something. That's good. Does God always need a hundred likes on your Facebook prayer request? In fact, he told Gideon, Gideon, you got way too many people in your army, son. We need to get, get rid of most of them. In fact, I'm going to get rid of practically all of them, and all I need is 300 men to stand and hold a lantern and a sword. That's all I need. And so to those of you today who have no power, it is nothing with God to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Here's what this verse is saying. God can use me in my state right now to help somebody even though I think I'm wasting mine and yours time standing up here today. Because the power never came from me to begin with. And it's not coming from me today. Y'all see that? If I were to ask you to raise your, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to ask you to do that, but if I were to ask you to raise your hand, who in here thinks that they've done so many terrible things in life that God could never use them? I'd probably get hands all over this building. But you just being here today has helped me. Just being here. Roy, you helped me today. Whether you think you're not good enough to serve God or to be of any use in God's kingdom, those are the ones God uses the most. In Esther chapter 9, remember we we're into that. Now in the twelfth month, that is the month Adar, on the thirteenth day, the same when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, although it was turned to the contrary, that the Jews had rule over them that hated them. The Jews, remember, in Esther were all going to be slaughtered and they had nothing going for them to stop it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not in favor of any gun control in this country. Leave my guns alone. But I'm going to say this. If I lost every one of them, I've got a bigger gun than all of them put together. And it's called prayer. Amen? Job 26, 2. How hast thou helped him that is without power? How savest thou the arm that hath no strength? Psalm 49, 15, but God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. See, not even death is going to stop me. When you think about that, not even death is going to stop you. In fact, kill us. We'll just come back with Jesus. Amen? Ecclesiastes 8, there is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither hath he power in the day of death. Think about that. In the day that you're going to die, can you stop yourself from dying? No. You have no, you have no say. You have no say over that. 
And there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. Isaiah 40, 29. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. I wonder who's trying to get my attention. All right. Daniel 3, 27. The princes and governors and captains and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had what? No power. Nor was an hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. When Jesus was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, then what had no power? The fire had no power. The enemy had no power. Daniel 6, he delivereth and rescueth and worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. And who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? It wasn't Daniel that delivered Daniel. And it wasn't the king who delivered Daniel. The king didn't even want to do it. But he had to because it was his own law. Daniel had no power against the lions. It's just that God blessed him and God was there. Hosea 13, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. See, that's what I said. Not even death is going to stop us. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. God can rescue us from even death. I'm going to stop there. That's the next message. I'm not ready to preach that one yet. I'm going to close. I'm going to bow. I want us to bow our heads. And again, I wish I could have been better for you today. Y'all deserve it. I want to be a good pastor to my people. I want to be a good husband to my wife. When I see a guy wearing a t-shirt that says Father of the Year, I'm jealous because I wanted that one. I want to be a good dad to my kids. I want to be a good grandpa to my grandchildren. The devil tried to take that all away years ago. And I'm glad he didn't. So today is your day to pray for me. That I can be the pastor that you need me to be. And then I'll pray for you too. Father, we come before you this morning. Thank you, God, for letting us be in your house. We couldn't even be here this morning without your grace allowing us to be. And Father, we thank you, God, that through everything that we deal with and everything that we go through. Even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane was looking for a way out. Like I was today. But he said, nevertheless, not my will. But thine be done. And so, Father, I pray that your will has been done today. And that in my weakness, Lord, you have been strong. In the lives of these that are here this morning, those that are watching with us online now, those that are watching in Kenya. Those that will listen to this message days after I preach it. Years after I preach it. That Father, this message will help somebody.
Maybe it'll help another preacher who's about ready to quit, who doesn't think he can go another day because the work is so hard nowadays. It doesn't seem like some days, Lord, that our labor produces anything. So, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would let this preacher today be a blessing to all those who have heard. To my wife first. To my family to all my friends and brothers and sisters here, to all of those out there across the world. Let my life and my work account for something, even when I'm not at my best. Fill our hearts with joy, Lord, let us share that joy wherever we go with people who need it. Somebody somewhere, Lord, I believe is going to come to somebody in this church this week. And they're going to ask them about Jesus. They're going to ask him about Christianity. Ask them how to be saved. Ask them how, about how to go to heaven. Lord, would you bless somebody here today with that. Give them the joy, Lord, of being able to share their faith with somebody. Make it easy for them. Make a difference in somebody's life. Thank you, Lord, for meeting with us today. Dismiss us in your care. Bring us back to the next appointed time, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen.